I'm going to start working on a study of a cone flower. As you can see, I've already set the groundwork, put in some tonal washes, having done a tonal drawing first. I'm now going to just work on one petal, which is not my normal practice, but it, I need to do it because of the time constraints of making a video. I've already, as you say, as I said, put in some tonal structure. And I'm now going to build up on that, starting here in the darkest area, just stroking in more of that shadow. I'm using an assortment of pinks and oranges and reds, perylene violet, rose doré, transparent orange, um, permanent rose, perylene, uh, perylene red, but not a lot of each, just going from one to the other. You have to find the colours you need in your own palette. You can always make the colour you want using what you've got. The paper is already damp so that you can stretch your colours out. I'm moving quite dry now, stretching that paint. If you're going too wet, you get a lot of bleed and you lose, lose everything. It all disappears to the edges. You want to leave as much light as you can, especially between those veins which are causing little bumps on the surface of the petal. Put some colour down, stroke it with a clean brush to soften it so that it doesn't stain. You can always build more. I'm going to this top shadow here. I don't want to lose the definition between those veins, so I won't fill in the colour till nearer the end. And I'll probably do that with a glaze, just a light colour to soften the whites. If you lose them too quickly, you lose the sparkle and the luminosity. Because I've got a variety of colours on my palette to dip into, I can go to a warm shadow or a bright orangey highlight just by going back into a different corner of my palette and picking up that was a little bit of orange there. Whereas at the top here, I'm going to a much warmer red. The brush is touching the paper very lightly. It's, I'm just feathering the paint into those grooves. So you don't lay down too much paint at once, it's not too damp. You're very much in control of where it goes.
Rose Dory is a lovely colour for this particular specimen, but it doesn't have much intensity, so you have to be quite firm with it. That was Rose Dory, now I'm putting a tiny bit of perylene, whoops, missed tiny bit of pairing into the shadow bit. Having done what's basically another tonal, I'll go back in and just pick out again slightly stronger all the detail. I like to build up the detail very gradually, otherwise you can lose it too quickly. Just with the tip of the brush, feather the colour in. I'd rather take twice as long and to get there more delicately. And twice as long isn't all day, it's an extra half hour on a petal or a flower. I'm going to stop in a minute and start again because I know that if I go on more than 10 minutes I can't transfer the video to my Facebook. It just refuses to take such a big thing. I've just done a little more to that and now I'm just going to build up the intensity still a bit further. Starting here at the top again, building up those shadows. You want to get the colours nice and rich without obscuring the light underneath. And it's a fine line between having the paint wet enough to leave behind and too wet that it bleeds all over everything.
just using virtually clean water now to stroke over everything, blending in the highlights and the shadows. Because I'm working just on one petal, it's impossible to tell whether I've gone far enough, which is why I work on everything at the same time. So you can see how the build-up's going. I would have to come back to this one when I've done everything else, just to check that it's dark enough or not too dark, and then go in with the finer details with the dry brush after everything is finished. I'm going to do a bit to the cone now. As you can see, I've started wet and wet, stippling in some dark shadow on the <clears throat> shadow side and a little bit of colour, a pinky orange, on the light side. The only detail you need to worry about is the detail that's in focus that's in the centre of the picture. If you do everything in detail, it tends to detract. You need to obscure slightly the detail in the shadow areas and the highlight areas. Now you can very carefully mark the Fibonacci sequence or you can ignore it. It's entirely up to you and your style of painting. If you ignore it, you just stipple in your lights and your shades in a sort of dotty fashion. Here I'm going to pick out the Fibonacci sequence with those little florets, just marking them with the shadow on each of the bubbles. And you also have to note that you've got perspective as well. So these little florets at the top are much smaller than the ones at the front. So you get your sense of perspective in your Fibonacci sequence, which makes it more real, and not as though you've just given it a token go at producing it. And as it gets round to the shadow, it disappears almost completely. And again at the top, so very light that you can't see the detail. It's time consuming. It's not difficult. You just have to be very patient. And I think to myself, I'm painting the cracks in between each of these florets, giving them definition. And the light disappears between them, so you get good shadow. My problem is I can't use my magnifying glass under the camera because it gets in the way, so I can't actually see what I'm doing. So I might have a Fibonacci sequence there, I might not. I won't be able to tell until I can look it through my magnifying glass with horrifying results probably. Now each one of these, I've wet one little bubble, I'm just beading in some colour. And what I don't want to do is lose that tiny highlight on it. So I won't go into the next one, I'll go into a different one.
I'm using a mixture of perlene violet and neutral tint to darken it. Not much neutral tint, it just dulls it down a bit. You just keep going, building up each little one. I hope more carefully than I'm doing. So I say I can't actually see very well what I'm doing without my magnifying glass. Looks more like a turtle. Wait for it to dry. I'm just imposing a little bit of blue over those front ones. You can experiment with colour. Quite often you find something quite unusual works. A little bit of pink in the highlighted areas, a little bit of blue in the shadow. Quite often it can be blue in the highlight, pink in the shadow. You have to play. And again, I wouldn't work on this exclusively and not do anything else. I would work on everything at the same time. I want a little bit of reflected light at the back there. So I'm just going to push that colour away. A bit better. And bring the dark area forward a bit. I've just done a little more to the centre of that cone, picking out with my magnifying glass that time, trying to tidy up the mess I made when I couldn't see what I was doing. And I will finish there because you can't work on it anymore until everything else is in place. But it's a question of going back constantly, refining all those details, building up the dark. It used to be darker on the dark side, still. <laughs> 